So I kind of want to just vlog a little bit today. No intro or any sort of spicy music, anything like that. I sort of just want to talk about where the game's at and kind of where my headspace is. Because um, I'm really just not even angry or depressed. I'm just what what's the word apathy yeah i'm 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 empathetic now toward the game because no ban list you guys and it's i know i've talked about this before but it's so hard to talk about the game when there's just nothing to talk about right like snake eyes is the best deck and i didn't write a script or anything for this i didn't really even think ahead of what i want to say because I'm sort of just dumbfounded with the game at this point. And I've been looking a lot at videos of like Yu-Gi-Oh's dying, Yu-Gi-Oh's getting bad. And you know it's bad <laughs> when a big Yu-Gi-Tuber like Cali Effect is agreeing with a much smaller Yu-Gi-Tuber like me that this is the worst format arguably ever. And keep in mind, I've been playing this game competitively since 2008, right? I've talked about that multiple times. And I have played through Dragon Ruler 2013. I played Dragon Ruler then. I've always like tried to play the best deck. I played Infernities in like 2009, 2010, whenever they were the best deck up there with X-Sabers. I played Necroz and got my shit pushed in. I've played all these best decks. I have played all of these formats. I didn't play Pepe, um, but I went to YCS Atlanta when Pepe first kind of became a thing and got my booty hole destroyed. Um, I'm just so tired of it, though. Like... This is the worst format. Despite all of those other formats I just mentioned I played it in, Cali Effect was like, I 100% agree with this. And I'm like, bro, if I have a big YouTuber agreeing with me, you know that that is just a sign of the times. And keep in mind, I'm 27. I'm going to be 28 in October. And I, because of like this whole like just toxic, terrible format, I've really been sitting back and thinking to myself, like, do I want to quit this game? And more specifically, at what point in time in my life do I want to quit this game? I'm going to be 28 in October, and I'm sitting back thinking, like, am I going to quit this game, like, when I turn 30? And I say that because as much as I love creating content, as much as I love doing this, you know, as, like, a side hustle and just having a good time, being a character on the internet, you know, calling Master Duel Master Shits and telling people to go touch grass and smooth brains and <laughs> all this fun stuff at times like you just get tired of it because it's like you can only dunk on the same thing for so much it, it actually kind of impresses me how someone like blame truth who's been posting youtube videos for over like i think like over a decade now and for years he's been crapping on call of duty and somehow he is still crapping on call of duty while playing x defiant and i feel like Yu-Gi-Oh is in a very similar position with that now where like in the sense of instead of going to X Defiant, maybe people are going to like Time Wizard formats or just different card games altogether, One Piece, Lorcana, you name it, and then they're still dunking on Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery, play a Time Wizard format, play a different card game. I've tried to get into other card games in the past, like Vanguard and Magic, and the number one thing for me with other card games, and even many players have said the same thing, Yu-Gi-Oh! scratches this specific itch that no other card games can, where Yu-Gi-Oh! is like the fighting game of other card games, where like, you watch Smash Brothers, that's a fighting game, but then you watch like different video games be played that aren't necessarily that, or even like in this case, different card games, there's a much different uh, atmosphere of the game, where you're not just I'm going to combo, 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 combo. I'm going to set up Fiend Smith. I'm going to set up Wave Hiking or a Beatrice. I'm going to dump a Snake Eyes Ash, and I'm just going to go, 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 go. <sighs> like, going to a different format doesn't matter, I feel. And there have been times where Konami has tried to promote different formats. One of them, <laughs> a really good example of them prom promoting, in air quotes, a different format would be like Deckmaster format, when they just kind of gave brief rules of what it was, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to play Last Warrior from another planet, so neither of us can summon monsters. I'm going to draw the five pieces of Exoding Wind, or I'm just going to play a Burn deck. Like, if, if you don't know the deck master rules, don't worry about it, but it's, it's actually kind of comical. But does playing a different format really solve anything? No, because I feel like, and th this is kind of my issue with Time Wizard formats, going to a previous format is fine, right? 
Nothing wrong with that. I love the nostalgia. I've been playing this game, like I said, since 2008. I think that that's great. But inherently, I feel that you're still supporting a game that has issues that Konami is not willing to address. That's number one. Number two being you can only play those formats for so long before you get bored again. Like, imagine you're like, I don't like modern Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm going to go to Edison format, right? Okay, you're going to go to Edison. You play, play, play. You get really good. You get really good. And even if, like, you're doing well, or maybe you're like me, where for a time I was kind of jaded with Yu-Gi-Oh! Where if I wasn't doing well, I was hating the game... There's like, say, a big Edison tournament coming up, and you just don't want to go because you're tired of the format. Because after a while, Edison format will be solved. There were things that people didn't realize were good, like Reptilian Vosky, that people are now playing because they're really good. Or like how maybe, what's the word? Maybe how decks weren't completely solved. And so that led to different ways of deck building. But then once a format gets totally solved, especially in the age of the internet that we're in now, much more than even what we were in in 2010, even though we had the internet then, it's just expanded more since then. These formats get solved so quick. So now it's like, okay, well, this format's been solved. If you're not playing, you know, X quick draw deck, insert name here, you're losing, right? And so like what are you going to do at that point like you're going to go to another another format you're going to go to tell it at oh that format's been solved uh you better play crush card virus or else you're going to lose you're going to go to goat format okay you have to play pretty much chaos turbo or you're going to lose that's actually something i really have started to hate about goat format is that every event you look at it's like either chaos turbo or like panda burn like it's hardly even goat control anymore which Okay, I guess that goes with the times and the player base and how the more of the player base want to play super fast turbo decks because that's just the mindset of players now. Okay, fine. But like when every result like out of GOAT format tournaments is like chaos turbo, at least from what I've seen, maybe shit's changed since I last looked at it, but all the results I've seen is just chaos turbo or fucking panda burn because burn has a good matchup going into GOAT control. I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm just really tired of it. And, and maybe it comes down to, partially, to the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh! was what I spent a lot of my past time doing. Like, when I was preparing for YCS Indianapolis, I was literally going to bed thinking about cards that I could be playing in my deck, combo lines, how to do different things, what's the most optimal way of doing things. Now it's like I'm sitting here just twiddling my thumbs, rocking in my chair, like, okay, when's the next thing? What's going on? Um... Because Infinite Forbidden is going to be such a slap in, in honestly, right in the dick. Because it's going to be a pretty impactful set. And it really makes me think, like, is Yu-Gi-Oh! worth playing? And maybe this comes more from the fact because I've played the game so long. And I've ha I have all these memories of these players who were super cool that I really enjoyed meeting. But then also those players who were dicks. And, like, one particular player, not going to name their name, uh, who cheated my dad with Monoglacia years ago, looping it multiple times to loop his entire hand, and, and he didn't catch it. And that, that, that person doesn't even play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. Or, like, how I told the story a while back about how there was a kid who stopped coming to locals because one of the guys there called him a homophobic slur and that he sucked at Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, obviously, I don't really see any of that kind of stuff now. Like... The community I have here in Jacksonville, Florida, that I have grown to know over time, even though I'm basically a dinosaur in the community at this point, like, I get along with everybody, so, like, maybe they're talking shit behind my back, I don't know, I like to think that they're not, but if they are, they're not telling me to my face, which is fine, like, not everybody's gonna get along with everybody, but it's the fact that, to me at least, that toxicity is gone, like, it's not there in your face. <sighs> And it really makes me wonder how long this game is going to survive. And it's funny that I say all this because I'm waiting till it comes in the mail to actually make a video about it. But I just bought a PSA 8 Blackluster Soldier Normal Monster from the, the sweepstakes. I'm sure some people are going to say, oh, Avery, why'd you waste your money on a PSA 8? It was like $600 after shipping and taxes. Yes, it's off center. And it looks like there's some sort of ding on the car, like in the top left-hand corner. But you crack it out of the PSA case and you resell it like... It is what it is. Or I just get it regraded. Either way, it's going to go up over time. Like, who cares, right? But I'm still just tired of the game. Like, collecting is one thing. And that's really something that I feel like I've gotten into more is collecting. Like, 
when the retro pack thing comes out, I'm really tempted to buy a box just to hold on to. All of the investment things that I've done recently in the game have done nothing but gone up. We bought the Kaiba briefcase. That's $1,200 sealed. Uh, I'm keeping the 61 card deck sealed. That stuff's like over a thousand bucks. The blue eyes are like a thousand bucks. The Egyptian God stainless steels I bought for 400 are like 600 to 2000. I've even seen some listings as high as five grand. Like we have definitely plus the, the, the sealed boxes. Like when I bought LOB for 90 bucks, that's up to like $150 now for one sealed box. So like I'm making money doing these things and I have enjoyed that, but going to events and playing right now in this toxic format, like I'm excited to play a different deck, like whether it's just, you know, Fiendsmith, a Fiend Link deck, good stuff, or like a Snake Eyes, Fiendsmith pile, like whatever, but it's still Snake Eyes. It's not enjoyable. It's not something that you know, passes the time that I enjoy getting better at. And people to this day, I don't know how. People like, maybe it's because Jesse Cotton's good at Master Duel. And maybe it's because MDB Yu-Gi-Oh is good at Master Duel. I don't know. But there are still people in the community saying that Master Duel is a good thing and that the game is better now since release. It's always been dog shit. I don't know what these people are talking about. Maybe it's just because they win all the time. I actually had some smooth brain tell me, you don't like Master Duel because you just lose all the time. It's one of my comments. And I literally replied back with, no, I don't play this garbage game. Like, it's a gotcha game. Uh, literally, if you're putting money into it, you're wasting your money. It's like buying into an NFT, which NFTs essentially have no value either, which I've talked about on the channel before. And it's hilarious to me that people think the game's actually good and that it helped Yu-Gi-Oh. It helped Yu-Gi-Oh when it was out for like the first month because all these VTubers and other people who don't know fuck all about Yu-Gi-Oh played it for like one or two streams and then never played it again. Iron Mouse, I think, played Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel with some other YouTuber for like one stream and that was it. And it was really cringe. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think Iron Mouse is cool, but that stream was like totally cringe. I watched some clips and stuff. It was just totally cringe. And you get all these people who are going to play it just to get that cash money because, you know, they want the views, they want the donations, they want the ad revenue, they want the whatever, right? And then they're not going to touch that shit anymore because they don't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, they're going to see Link Monsters, Artifact Scythe, and Barrier Statue, whatever the hell else is in Master Shits. And they're going to be like, oh, this isn't the Yu-Gi-Oh! I remember, click off, and then they just never come back. And that's hilarious because it's like you clearly don't know anything about this game and you don't see how toxic it, it, it can be. And I'm not trying to sound toxic myself, but it's like, Jesus Christ, like people that don't know what's going on and they come into the game, especially if they're just trying to get ad revenue, like that just disgusts me. Or they're like trying to prop up Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, hey guys, things are still good because Master Duel is a good game when it's not. And to, to me, if like if someone tells you Master Duel is a good game, I feel like that they're just lying to you. Like it's it's really gross. I don't know, you guys. I'm just really empathetic right now. I want to be posting daily, but I, I can't when there's nothing to talk about. And I'm sitting here with my thumb up my butt, wondering when we're getting a ban list. And staring at the ultra ball as we decide what we're going to do with our life maybe by 30 i will quit this game i hope not but god with how the game is going i really don't know how much longer we have but what do i know i'm just some yu tuber with 1400 subscribers regardless of the fact i have over 10 years of playing this game but I've never topped a YCS, so I guess I'm just a nobody. I actually heard someone say that. Like, if you haven't topped a big event, then you're just a nobody. Get fucking real. Anyways, you guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. I know that this is kind of more of a somber video, but it's just something I want to get off my chest. Something that's been on my mind. I, I, it's important to not get into the cave, the mystic mind, right, of constantly seeing bad things about a game that you enjoy. Because eventually you're going to get that confirmation bias and think that it is really bad when maybe there are some things that are good the old Yu-Gi-Oh! ds world championship games even the old game boy games are still really fun to play and that's what i've been doing too that's a really fun time you want to play an old retro format in a fun way go play the old world championship games on the ds that's a good time guys thanks for watching i love you very much i'll speak with you again very very soon